Hi friends. Right off the bat, this will not be a review. And you ask yourself, well then why am I watching this video, Alicia? Full disclaimer, I did not purchase the Bridgerton collection. This was sent to me. However, when I had decided to skip on this release, I did not receive word of any type of PR. In fact, I assumed I would not receive anything since I did not receive a package from the first Bridgerton release. And I was fine with that. And when it did go live, I said, Meh. I haven't touched the last release as of late, and when I saw the shades online, I immediately thought, listen, a lot of the shades look like the ones that already exist in the first palette, and a couple of others we can find in our Pat McGrath collection or other brand of eyeshadow palettes or eyeshadow singles. And the reason I still wanted to film with the PR is to give you comparison swatches because, in fact, I was going to film a video like this anyway, explaining why I skipped the collection, but still go into Pat McGrath shadows and make comparisons based on the photos online. But since now we have the actual palette, that will be a lot easier. I received a partial collection, the eyeshadow palette, one of the body shimmer powders, and two of the lipsticks, one being Elson 5, which I believe is already an existing shade, and this one, Negligee, which I think is a new shade. And what I have on now that I like, but I'll get into more details in a bit. And that's how we're going to roll with this video. I'm not going to go over prices or all that, not like a typical review. We'll go into the swatches, then make the comparisons, and we'll do a demo at the end. And all timestamps will be down below if you wish to skip over to a specific portion of the video. And full disclaimer, I adore Pat McGrath, and I do receive PR from time to time, as I did just now. But I wasn't crazy about this release, and that's why I skipped it. And again, I skipped it not because in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, she's going to send it to me anyway. No, I thought I was not going to receive it at all. And I was completely fine with not owning any of these pieces from the collection. My sentiments are the same as I expressed in my first Bridgerton video where I wasn't crazy about the packaging. And it's nice that it's pink, that they changed the color scheme, but the bows and the pearls... It feels a little artificial to me, and it's not the cardboard either. Pat has plenty of cardboard palettes that sure feel cheaper compared to the black lacquer cases that are in her 10 pan eyeshadow palettes as well as a few of her quads. Just the design is very frilly, and I just don't align with it. And no, I have not watched the show yet. Why, you ask? There's just too much good anime to watch and make time for Bridgerton. I refuse. Have you guys seen Ranking of Kings? When you start that series, you'll understand why it's tough to tear your eyes away from some anime. Boji Sama for life. Here is the palette, again, very similar to how it was designed in the first release. This is made in Italy. Assume that it might have been, since it has two big shades that, again, usually found in her Lux quads or her 10 pan eyeshadow palettes. When I saw this shade, I immediately thought of Gigabyte in Subversive. I was like, that's Gigabyte. But according to the description, is a deepened chartreuse. So we're going to have to see about that. And Flawless, my dear, is a line in the show. I think uh, a line that is said to one of the main characters. I failed to explain that in my first video. Scintillating Diamond Body Shimmer. This is, I believe, Pat's first body, body product where... Sure, not exclusively has to be used on the body, can be used also on the face, I assume. One out of two shades, I have Scintillating Diamond. This is made in the USA of imported ingredients. It has the puff. It's mostly paper, so it doesn't feel the most luxe. You have your puff with the bow here, but they put the sticker on the cardboard so I was not able to lift this off successfully and had to poke holes with my box cutter. <laughs> not the most glamorous approach but I had to get the powder out somehow. And I believe this is a new lipstick formula for Pat McGrath, the Satin Allure. Not the same as the satin lipstick she had released after her matte trans. I, I think I, I might be wrong but this feels lighter. It sits between 
her divinals which is very glossy has a very glossy finish but really nice color as well more veil like and not opaque but it doesn't have the same color impact as her original satin lipsticks which i remember they they kind of grabbed your lips and people were not happy with that finish because it accentuated their lip texture this is a lot smoother and has really nice shine again this is in the shade negligee and it's basically is my lip shade is exactly my lip shade and as i'm putting this on i'm going to the product page this is described to be a neutral pink beige satin shine finish medium buildable coverage and it comes with a pretty bow so this i do like i do like the lipstick packaging with the bow here on the front but they did use a lighter plastic it does feel lighter it doesn't feel as luxe as her previous components here you can see i'm not sure maybe if i do this you can see better so just based on the cap there's less plastic in the cap from the bridgerton collection versus the astral component cap and you only have a gold line here where you have the entirety of the top covered with gold so that is my critique the lipstick unit itself doesn't feel as luxe as her matte trans or even her other lipstick products the bow is cute it gives me barbie vibes but that's about it they did not send me the blush product when i saw this i was like i don't know if i would the packaging it being round and there's just so much space in there i'm i would have been intrigued to try a baked blush formula from pat but then i remembered i have all of her divine blushes and maybe she'll release these as singles or in a palette at some point maybe we'll see them in the next holiday release I'm not entirely sure and if she never does that i'll be fine i'll survive first we have refinement a luminous pale rose gold highlighter now that is very pretty i like that it's smooth but this is like the skin show nude shade that exists somewhere out of our 20 pat mcgrath palettes compared to iconic ingenue which i think might be more pink but again splitting hairs here maybe the one in bridgerton too has a little more beige that's all i could really identify this is the eye blush shade in regency romance a peony pink i actually do love the blush satin formula i would love to see four of these shades in a quad without it being tv show related because the satin finish i think lid friendly especially if you have texture there it has a little shine it's not completely matte but not a metallic either compared to these two shades found in bridgerton one specifically art of the swoon and love match art of the swoon and love match maybe more coral love match a little more red Art of the Swoon, more pink. First of the astral shades included Diamond's Desire. This is her astral formula. And listen, that's gorgeous. And very smooth compared to some of her astral shades found in her bigger palette. What comes to mind immediately is Astral Amethyst Moon found in Utopian Dream, which is a little chunky, okay? But the astral shade found in Divine Rose 2 it's smoother it reminds me of that so we can definitely swatch to compare but this is a lot user friendly in terms of texture forbidden amour this looks to be like a plummy plum plum and we'll immediately compare this to <laughs> plum regalia forbidden amour plum okay so plum regalia 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 looking a little cool and forbidden amour is looking more reddish plum got it before we move on hold on one second i thought of this color found in celestial odyssey's bronze borealis this is mink dusk when i i saw that shade i was like oh okay let's see how it compares i think it resembles the plum shade found in the first bridgerton palette this is more red i'll visit the other palettes where i think this exists somewhere in daring dandy now this intrigued me i thought this would have been one of the astral shades this is more of an aqua metallic but i wanted to show i'm sorry hold on again citrine envy from celestial odyssey last year's holiday collection 
This is definitely more aqua, but Citrine Envy has more shine, as you see, but I understand it's a completely different color, but you know, just wanted to present that. And also the turquoise shade from Nocturnal Nirvana. This is an actual formula. It is baked, so not the the metallic formula that's found in Daring Dandy. Comparing it to the actual shade that exists in Palette 1, Regency Blue. This is actually a baked shade where, again, Daring Dandy is a more traditional metallic. I'll just hit it right between there. So that's a lot more silver blue in tone. If you have Natasha's Pastel Palette or even Tropic, I think the equivalent shade is Mint Frost. This is a, a thicker, thicker texture, but it reminded me of the color. A little more aqua, more veil-like, but you know, we have that color somewhere, I'm sure. And lastly, Forever Charmed. This is a baked formula. It is described to be a deepened chartreuse. You know it was coming. Compared to Gigabyte, what do we have here? As I suspected, they're very similar. Maybe there's more antique in Gigabyte. That's the only difference I see. The texture is very smooth, however. So if you've never encountered a Pat McGrath baked shade, if you don't have Pat McGrath anything, this is a, a beautiful shade, especially when it settles onto the lid and the light hits. The twinkle factor is outrageously gorgeous. But if you already have Gigabyte, no one's gonna tell if it's Gigabyte or what is this called again? Forever Charmed. If they do, well, great. They have a fantastic eye for color differentiation. <laughs> and just to show what the skin, the scintillating diamond powder looks like, it's actually quite nice, it's pretty. I rarely wear body shimmer anything because I don't like to get it on my clothes. I know that, you know, it's whatever. Things washed off. That was terrible. It's because I can't get the sticker off here. My gosh. Let me see if I could poke holes like this. Mm. Mm. I can't tell if this has a fragrance or not. It's pretty. It's like a... It's like a, a champagne gold something. Let's put it on the, the cheekbones here. Huh, it has some sparkle, but if you want a more subtle serving of highlighter, if you rather apply a loose powder, it's not bad. I don't find myself using this extensively because it's a pain to get the powder out. But he's gonna, he's gonna give me a shiny shoulder. Fine, maybe I'll use it in the summertime or something. Mm. I also thought of Fire Rose Opal from Bronze Seduction Mothership 5 compared to Daring or Darling, D Darling Dandy. This is more teal and it has a more prominent flip. There's no flip at all in that aqua shade. Astral Pink Moon from Divine Rose 2 compared to Forever Charmed. I swatched it again here on this side. So here's Astral Pink Moon. On this angle, you can see Astral Pink Moon has a little more champagne, whereas Diamond's Desire has a little more of a pink base. But as you can see, they're very similar. Now on this angle, you see more gold on the flip from Astral Pink Moon. Diamond's Desire, there's more of a cooler pink undertone here. That is the difference. I don't know if you can detect that, but I believe the shade I thought of when I swatched Forbidden Amour was Extreme Burgundy from Divine Rose 2. So let's, let's give that a whirl. So here is Forbidden Amour, and here is Extreme Burgundy. Now, sure, Extreme Burgundy has a little more depth, but the undertones, I feel, are quite similar. Taking a look at these two again, Bridgerton 2, Bridgerton 1, very similar. I'll just swatch the Skin Show shade from Divine Rose 2. There you go. And the Peony shade, sure, it might not exist in Divine Rose 2, but meh. This is not the same formula. However, it's still pink. I think it's giving you more hot pink than, yeah, it's just a cooler pink. So this is from Divine Rose 2. 
This is from Bridgerton too. It's a warmer, more coral pink. Okay, I think if you mix it with Naked Blush, it could kind of steer the shade to be more cool. So I put Naked Blush over, what is this called? Rose Seduction, Rose Seduction. I applied a Naked Blush over Rose Seduction and that took down the coolness a little bit. So you could, you can mix and match, you know what I'm saying? All right, now that we've completed what I think are the standout comparisons that exist in our Pat McGrath collection. I just kept it Pat McGrath with the exception of the Natasha Denona Mint Frost shade because I'm sure a lot of you already have a lot of Pat McGrath and maybe you did like the color story found in this palette, but you were like, heck no, I'm not buying that. Well, now that we've gathered all the shades that resemble the ones here, we could get cracking and start creating as a looks. With that said, fam, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. I have the Viseart primer on the lids, but I thought we can begin applying the eye blush shade on our cheeks. Why not? This again is a, a very pink coral shade and on the complexion, it applies beautifully, very smooth. So I, I do love the eye blush formula, this baked satin formula, user friendly, not intimidating, has a beautiful finish on the skin, not only the cheeks as you see here, but on the lids. Really great pickup with the brush. You can build up the intensity as you like. Hmm. Refinement was described to be a highlighter, perhaps in regards to eyes, but I thought maybe we can apply refinement on the cheekbones here. I think that's very nice. It has a, a pinky highlight to it. The texture is beautiful. I actually prefer this over the body shimmer powder, which I understand not meant or was not marketed to be applied on the face, but this is quite lovely. Refinement I like. It doesn't look heavy on the skin. It doesn't look like a tight, creamy, metallic texture placed on the cheekbones. Forbidden love, let's do it. This has a lot of uh, kickback in the pan. It's powdery, but it has a pretty nice smooth blend. I would apply the shade, yes, to set up the eye if you like, or place it all over lid and crease to just commit to the color. I'm just pulling it out a bit so we could get that wing haze going. That's nice, I, I mean, it's nice. The, the formula is nice. I think it's just the repetition problem we are addressing here. I'm gonna pull that same color under the lash line. Hmm. There's also a very chunky eyeliner cold that looks cool if you do liner on a regular basis. It's bigger than the Permagel liner that exists in her collection already. So if you wanna draw on a very thick line or maybe use it as a base, then yes, that design makes sense for that task. I like the blend on that. That was very smooth, nice color. Again, I think you have this in not only extreme burgundy, but extreme maroon mahogany. Extreme mahogany is in divine rose one. Mahogany, forbidden love, okay, fine. So. Mahogany is like a little more brown. Maybe you want that anyway. You prefer that. Now we could do refinement on the lid, Regency Romance. We could do the mint. That would have a, a very contrasting look. Don't know if I'm gonna go that route. Maybe let's take Diamond's Desire and just see how that does as the standout lid color. It's not going to have the same base as some of the metallics here, but it does have a lovely twinkle effect. Now beware, I picked up way too much and ended up with fallout under the eyes. I did not follow my own rules when it comes to Pat's astral shades. Tap and pat, you don't want to swirl and twirl because you'll pick up too much of the texture and when patting it on, it will fall because it is flaky, but it quite lovely. So when you shine light on these astral shades, 
it looks lovely and this is one of the the features or the favorites from pat shadows the astral textures it just delivers that twinkle effect without the formula actually being glitter so you could go that route if you wanted maybe we can add some forever charms on the outer part of the lid so i'm tapping that on the outer portion so it pulls into the diamond shade so i think that creates a nice gradient i mean we're just trying things here and the darling dandy darling let's place that on the inner corner as well as the inner lower lash line now when applied on the eyes you can see more of that distinct aqua shade whereas on the swatched it looked more it looked lighter it looked more like a veil of color versus an actual metallic so that's one way to go of course with some lashes or you can add a wing liner i definitely want to go in all forever charmed on this eye because again i think this is meant to be used all over the lid this color was on the actress featured on pat's feed where this was on the lid and the coal liner along the lash line, it looked absolutely gorgeous. And they purposefully put hard light on those photos and videos so you can see, again, that twinkle effect. That's just so lovely. Look at that. Again, gigabyte. I'm just using a, a fluffy brush here to tap a little bit through the crease. But what's really nice about these textures is that it feathers off. It doesn't have a harsh, abrupt stop to the blend. So you don't actually have to pair this with a, a matte shade or even a, a translucent powder. It just has a nice light texture that you can manipulate where it has, again, that beautiful scatter effect. Refinement on the inner corner. That is an interesting choice. Let's do the Darling shade. I think maybe that pairs better. Although a different color, the mint with the chartreuse, I think is a wonderful pair. Why not? Let's tap some Diamond's Desire over Forever Charmed. That's really going to bump up the shine from the center of the lid. Bao Shao. To keep it simple, we can then place Forever Charmed on the lower lash line as well. You don't have to. You can forego this step and maybe just apply some liner at the top. I know I didn't apply Regency Romance. I know I didn't apply Regency Romance. Maybe we can do that on the next round. So with that said, I'll apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here are the final looks from round one. I don't think it's a matter of questioning quality. The quality is there. Despite the fact that I don't like the packaging, I actually really love the satin blush formula. The astral shades are on par with the ones that exist in her bigger palette. So there's no decrease in quality there, especially Forever Charmed. If you have Gigabyte, then you're fine because if you were to apply Gigabyte in the same fashion, you will achieve the same look. And to get the mint on the inner corner, you can go again with Fire Opal or Citrine Envy. It'll be a little darker, but then you can put something lighter on the center, more of a champagne shade to adjust the color a little bit. And the actual shades I feel are pretty easy to use. Just don't apply a lot on the first application because it does deliver this beautiful scatter star dust effect on the eye. So again, have always loved that about Pat McGrath Astral Shades. That's why I have each and every one of her Mothership palettes and then some. The, the one matte that exists in the palette, really nice color, very easy to blend. I didn't have any trouble with the formula whatsoever. I have to say, over the course of maybe two or three years, Pat's mattes have become a little softer than the ones found in her original three Mothership palettes. Those were harder pressed and they have a lot of pigment, but tougher to blend so they packed a lot of punch i'm happy she softened the texture a little bit because i think it is easier to blend she did not forego pigmentation for sure so you still have the color richness but i do think an easier time to blend out the shades in my opinion because of the softer texture you will have more kickback in the pan so that is something to consider if that is an issue for you i was going to just do these two looks but i want to do two more 
I want to try the mint shade all over the lid and also use the peony shade in some capacity. So yeah, why don't we take this off and we'll be back for two more looks and then we'll call it a day. Regency Romance now thrown, the sticker's still on the mirror, just thrown here on the crease. This will not serve the same amount of coloring on the first lay down, like Forbidden Amor does. The more traditionally formulated matte in this palette, keep that in mind, is more of a veil of color on the eyes. This is labeled, this is called eye blush. So one of Pat's newer formulas to the collection. So it definitely has that blush eye look. You can pull it out more from the edge of your lash line, bring it around the brow to create the blush brackets, okay? You can place Forbidden Amor on the outer corner, or we can do, let's do refinement on the lid. This is the shadow I applied on the cheekbones as well. I actually really like this formula. It's very lightweight and smooth, even though it's a metallic. It's lighter in weight than the mint shade, which I find advantageous if you did want to apply this on your cheekbones. It will not look chunky on the skin. So that's a nice effect. Why don't we go in with Forbidden Amour on the lash line? So I'll take my pencil brush here. Although I don't think it will show up as much as like a, a deeper brown shade, if you wanted to still apply this on the lash line because it does roll into Regency Romance in a way that it's not as distinct if you were to use a deeper color. Regency Romance here on the lower lash line, tapping some Diamond Desire on the inner corner. So we'll use this actual shade as our highlight and maybe Darling Dandy on the lower inner lash line. Now, I believe this is the weakest shade out of the palette. It doesn't have the same amount of shine. Well, I would say that both Refinement and Darling Dandy fall in the same category for me. There is shine, but not as much like how it exists in the Diamond Desire shade and the Forever Charm shade. Now with the mint shade on the lid here for this look. I think you pick up more of the aqua color when you place this shade over a larger region of the eye, in and around, and I'm tapping that in and under my crease line because I don't necessarily want to use a matte. You know, this could be a pastel moment if you just wanted to use this shade all over the lid and have that mint vibe, you know what I'm saying? But again, this is not the strongest metallic Pat has ever created. The metallics found in Celestial Odyssey have more shine than this one. If we wanted, I can tap on Diamond Desire, Diamond's Desire, over the mint, so we could get a little more sparkle there on the lids. And that same shade here under the lash line, Refinement on the inner corner. You know what I want to do? I want to hop back into the original palette and tap on Regency Blue on top of the mint. See what that does. Oh, that's pretty. Not saying you need both, fam. Just kind of, if you, if you happen to buy this palette or if you want to use Mint Frost or a similar shade that already exists in your collection and you have the first Bridgerton eyeshadow palette, Regency Blue looks very nice on that shade. I did get fallout from the Astral Shades, so if you want to avoid having fallout, make sure you apply your shadow first. Alrighty, apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here is round two using Pat McGrath and Bridgerton eyeshadow palette number two, officially named Belle of the Ball. Again, the, the shadows are fine. I didn't want to buy it before. After using it, do I go back on deciding if I want it or not? Not necessarily, because again, these are looks I can create already with the shadows that I own. But since the team was very kind in sending me PR anyway, I thought it would be helpful to you to make comparisons given the shades that I already own. And hopefully the swatches were clear on screen for you to make comparisons in your own eyeshadow collection. Let me know if you decided to pick this up anyway, if you already did, if you have the blushes, if you tried them out, how they compare to the 
the Divine Blush formula. I do really adore the lipstick. I love the lipstick color. Again, not crazy about the packaging. It doesn't feel as heavy and luxe as her previously made lipstick components, but I adore the color. Negligé, this Satin Allure formula, I think, will be better received than her original satin formula that was very creamy but very tight around the lips. This is more medium coverage. It's more than a balm, it's not as shiny as her Divinals, but very comfortable to wear and nice to apply. It doesn't have a strange smell or lipstick smell. It's not fragrance, but there's no like lipstick smell to it either. And the body powder, a nice addition to the collection. I don't think necessary, especially if you don't wear body decorative products to begin with. If you do, maybe you can consider it, but again, I don't think it's necessary. Sure, I'll use it because I don't want it to go to waste, but I don't think the most practical item that I will have in my makeup collection. I will see you down in the comments, fam, and until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Pat McGrath extravaganza. Monthly favorites or eyeshadow tutorial. Take care and I will see you again soon.